Hello all of you lovely little people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and you know what, generally speaking, opening levels in video games tend to be a pretty simple affair, because they're meant to acquaint players with the game's given controls and mechanics, and whether or not they're an outright tutorial or not, are meant to be easy to allow a gradual ramp up of difficulty throughout the game to then test the player's skills. But you know what, not all developers are quite so keen to follow this formula, or indeed patient enough to hold off on punishing their own customers, and so we have these 10 games which well, for whatever reason decided to dish up a shockingly challenging level right out of the gate. It may well have been a conscious effort to bamboozle players and prepare them for the rest of the game, or just an actual mistake in development whereby player aptitude was fatally overestimated. Either way, let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 brutal video game opening levels that guaranteed a game over. Number 10. The Great Wall, Tomb Raider 2 the second Tomb Raider marked an unexpectedly large step up in difficulty from its predecessor, as became abundantly, painfully clear almost in the game's very first level, The Great Wall. Now, basically, Tomb Raider 2's opening level is as challenging and demanding as the later Atlantis levels in the original, pitting Lara against tigers, ravens, giant spiders, and goddamn two T Rexes. Two? Come on. That's not to forget an array of tricky traps and platforming sections which make the Great Wall the definition of being thrown in at the deep end with lead shoes on. Even if you were smart enough to practice your platforming and traversal skills in Lara's Mansion before starting the game proper, Tomb Raider 2 makes few concessions to new players, while even those that beat the original game might have found themselves struggling just to get through the bloody opening level. Number 9. The Prologue – Near Automata Potato Potata Near Automata Potato Potata's prologue level became immediately infamous amongst players due to the fact that it's not only shockingly difficult for an opening level, but also because there was no way for players to save until they'd made it all the way through to the bunker. And given that the prologue takes around 40 minutes on normal difficulty alone, and can take over an hour on hard, during which time the player has to fight two challenging bosses, it can be enormously frustrating for players to repeat this sequence again and again due to Yoko Taro's love for chastising his own fanbase. For many players, they ultimately decided to swallow their pride and rush through the prologue on easy difficulty, because you know what? Life is too short for this needlessly forced repetition. Number 8. The Tutorial – Driver at least most games on this list actually let their players get to the game proper, but you know what? Not the action-driving classic driver which lays claim to featuring possibly one of the most infuriatingly difficult tutorials in video game history. Now, the tutorial kicks off in an underground parking garage where the player is given a shopping list of maneuvers to pull off within a pretty tight 90 seconds. Now, beyond the annoying precision required to execute the listed moves correctly, and because driver released long before the days of YouTube, afflicted players either had to find the solution in a games magazine or walkthrough, or get one of their family members to do it for them instead. But if you didn't have any friends or family members that were able to do it for you, then, well, get used to seeing this dingy car hole for the rest of your life. Number 7. The First Ride – Superman 64 now, in fairness, Superman 64 is generally accepted to be one of the worst video games, and say it with me, kids, of all time! And all it took was playing through its opening level for most players to put this game down and never bloody return to it. The game opens with Lex Luthor challenging Superman, the Man of Steel, to fly through a convoluted maze in order to save his pals. And that translates to flying through rings, saving civilians, flying through yet more rings, helping the cops, flying through so many more rings, beating up the bad guys, and so on. And you know what? The controls were just bloody awful, and the time limit for completing these sections was extremely strict, and missing just three of these rings resulted in a restart, surely causing countless broken N64 controllers. And to make matters worse, every odd-numbered level in this game followed this ring-flying formula, near enough guaranteeing the mental breakdown of anyone who actually managed to power through to the bloody end. Number 6. Chapter 1-1 Resident Evil 5 now, the Resident Evil games certainly have a habit of getting down to business quickly, and Resident Evil 5 might actually offer up the most glaringly intense opening sequence of any game in the series to date. Now, Resident Evil 5 opens in Africa with an outbreak of the Las Plagas Parasite, forcing player character Chris Redfield and his logically impaired AI teammate, if played solo that is, Sheva Alomar, fending off against a seemingly endless fleet of the ferocious, infected Magini. It's a tricky sequence because the game throws so, so many enemies at the player 
Blair, and at one point even does so within a terrifyingly confined shack. And that's before the executioner shows up, a gigantic, hulking beast of a man who can make short work of inattentive players. Basically, you're just fending the enemies off until an invisible timer counts down and you're rescued, which for the more casual Resident Evil fans in particular, made for a frustratingly tough opening level. Number 5. Liberty Island Deus Ex Deus Ex is one of the most innovative action RPGs ever made, but it's also a game which confidently threw the gauntlet down at the player's feet in the very first level, the iconic Liberty Island. As Agent J.C. Denton, the player must find a way to infiltrate the terrorist-occupied island while equipped with just a few of the augments and weapons which they'll eventually make frequent use of. Now played today, the level is shockingly lacking in expected hand-holding, more or less thrusting the players into a large sandbox area and letting them figure out the final Minor details for themselves. Now, to that end, younger players may well lack the patience for its tricksy trial and error gameplay nowadays. More than anything, though, Liberty Island underlines the importance of mastering stealth and other non-lethal methods, but more stubborn players in particular surely found themselves stumped by this level for hours. Number 4. Minas Ithil – Middle-Earth Shadow of War the bulk of Middle-earth Shadow of War's first act takes place in Minas Ithil and immediately announces itself to the player that this game is going to be decidedly tougher than its relatively manageable predecessor Shadow of Mordor. You can't go too far without bumping into a captain, the majority of which pose a serious challenge even to players on normal difficulty due to their ability to adapt to your attacks and skills. If you don't plan the fight accordingly and don't keep eyes peeled for hordes of orcs creeping up on you, it's incredibly easy to get ganked. And if you're mad and enough to play Shadow of War on Nemesis difficulty, well, you're going to be seeing a ton of game overs in just these first few hours. Number 3. The Marsh – Daikatana now, Daikatana is, in fairness, a game largely played out of morbid curiosity these days, and an infamous relic of creator John Romero's unchecked hubris, which was a critical and commercial flop upon its release. In addition to being an off-putting car crash of ugly presentation and terrible AI, it was also shockingly difficult from its very first level. So Daikatana opens up in The Marsh, where the player is forced to contend with turrets and annoying robotic frogs and mosquito enemies, all of which can make short work of you even if you do actually have the wherewithal to know what you're supposed to do. So between this, the rubbish weapons that you're given, and the garish, earthy environments, for many players, the marsh was enough of Daikatana for one lifetime, one way or another. Number 2. Any opening level from any From Software game it's no secret that From Software's action RPG games are punishingly difficult by design, and they're also not in the business of in any way easing the player into the experience. From Dark Souls to Bloodborne to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, every single one of their major recent releases has kicked off with the player's low on health on upgrades, unable to do anything useful, and typically having no idea what the hell to even do. Oh, and these games will often throw a terrifyingly powerful boss at you before you've in any way prepared to take it on. Perhaps the most brutal example today is actually Sekiro, which starts out asking the player to actually ditch the combat and be as stealthy as possible, given that any enemy in the vicinity can one-hit kill you with ease. It somehow creates more of a recipe for a death screen than your typical FromSoft level, and actually left many considering whether Sekiro might even be too bloody hard for its own good. And number 1. Episode 1 – Joe the Hero – Beautiful Joe Cult classic side-scrolling beat-em-up Beautiful Joe might be a cute and colourful game, but it also makes a concerted effort to thoroughly piss players off in its very first chapter. It's not so much that the moment-to-moment -moment combat is excruciatingly tough, but that players are forced to spend close to 15 minutes fighting their way through several bosses before reaching the game's very first save point. The climactic helicopter boss is especially infamous amongst players for its absurd level of challenge, proving all the more frustrating given that dying here throws you right back to the beginning of the stage. No doubt, many simply resigned themselves to restarting the game on kids' difficulty, but you know what? That's not even a picnic itself. Bizarre, but a brilliant game nonetheless. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 brutal video game opening levels that guaranteed a game over. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice to my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say something. We detailed today a lot about games that slapped you hard in the face right out of the gate. And you know what? Life can do that to us sometimes. Life can be especially unfair and cruel but you know what? We should never, ever give up. Because you only get one chance at this life and you deserve to make the bloody best of it. If you are struggling, if you are feeling overwhelmed, then just remember, you're not alone. Friends, family, professionals in the support industry, these people care about you and want you to do well. So let's get through this together and make the bloody best of it. <laughs>